Hi, my name is Sabine Zimmermann and you're listening to Postcards from the Province, our podcast for the regions of Europe. In March, the Network for Culture and Local Traditions, in cooperation with the bidding office Hildesheim 2025, organized the Province Lab. We invited eight international experts who visited Hildesheim and the region and exchanged with the locals. Now, two months later, we talk again. What changed in Europe in the meantime? And how can we take the next step from European capital to European province of culture? Today I'm talking to Viktoras Bachmetjevas from Kaunas, uh, from Lithuania, and I'm very happy that you are here with us, Viktoras, um, and I'd like to welcome you, warmly welcome you, and um, I also like to introduce yourself to our audience. Uh, hello, so as you said, my name is Viktoras Bachmetjevas, and I'm a philosopher from Lithuania. I teach at uh, Vitos of Magnus University in Kaunas. Victoras, you uh, took part in our project Province Lab. It's uh, been uh, in March, well, obviously ages ago in these times, but uh, still uh, only two months uh, ago. So, uh, and, and you have been to a place called Zibise. It's a small village and... Um, When you think of it, what are your ex experiences or impressions about it? Uh, so when I was invited to come to Hildesheim and uh, and Sibese, I have to be honest, I knew almost nothing about it. And so in a way, it was good because I came with no preconceptions, uh, mm -hmm. with uh, my eyes open. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I if there's there is one word which I have to describe Sibisa, I would say uh, typical, and by typical I mean a typical European town. And uh, every time I went there, I went there I think two or three times during my stay in in Hildesheim. I would. Uh, the same idea would come back to me that if we look for a DNA of Europe, if we look for a type of where Europe was born, it is these small, typical villages or towns in the midst of Germany or Belgium or France that are the core of Europe. So for me, it was, it was really uh, interesting and inspiring to to visit Sibisa and to spend some time there. Mm -hmm. This is really very interesting uh, to see Sibisa as the DNA of Europe or maybe the core of the European identity. This is a very interesting aspect. I've never thought about it like this. And maybe this is for the people of Sibisa very interesting to hear that too. Um, yeah, well, I'll, I will tell them. I, <laughs> um, <laughs> I promise you. Um, so, um, as I said before, it's, uh, it's been ages uh, in these times uh, that uh, we met and uh, Maybe we do not know what uh, time will bring this year and what uh, summer will bring and uh, where to start our holidays if we have to stay at home or uh, in our country. What about the open borders uh, in Europe? We are not sure about that, of course. Uh, nobody can see into future. But um, um, you said you came here uh with an open mind and with no uh, ex expectations. Um, but uh, to be honest, we invited you because of your expertise uh, that you have in your job and in your country. And maybe you could tell our audience a little bit more about your work in uh, Lithuania and uh, what you do and what you're doing to make your region worth living. 
So as I said, my main occupation is I'm an academic philosopher, so my main job is uh, that I teach. But I also do other things. I, uh, for some time I was an advisor to the Minister of Culture in Lithuania, and uh, mm, uh, part of my responsibilities were uh, media, uh, media policy, but also I was... Uh, tasked with reviewing the network of uh, cultural institutions in the country. So uh, that was one thing which I brought uh, with me to Hildesheim and uh, tried to share my experiences of how uh, small regional cultural institutions can be activated, can be re-energized, because there's obviously always lack of resources or in terms of money and people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I, as a hobby, I am a publisher. I publish intellectual books, so that's uh, also a huge part of my work and life. Uh, it's mostly a hobby, but as it happens, sometimes hobbies take up a lot of your time to, if you're passionate about them. So I publish intellectual uh, philosophical books Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, also I'm involved in Kona's with trying to uh, make philosophy more visible in the city so these are probably mm, things which might be of interest to Uh, to your listeners. Mm. And uh, you said uh, you may want to make philosophy more visible. How do you do this? Well, uh, one thing which uh, I was involved with was that uh, we have a philosopher who was born in Konas and who later emigrated to France and, and became a prominent thinker in uh, Emmanuel Levinas. Uh, uh, for me, uh, it was really strange that people in Konas are not really aware of him. So a few years back, we tried, uh, we uh, made an initiative to name a square, a city square after Levinas, so that people would be more aware of of, uh, of this thinker. Also, I organized public readings and seminars where anyone who is interested can come and participate without any preparation. Uh, so it's uh, outside academia. It's not only for students, but for the general public. I also organize uh, public lectures and talks. Mm-hmm. So these are things which I uh, like to do. I, I like to engage people in, uh, in philosophy. I like to make them read. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. so that's in short, that that could be a short summary of <laughs> the initiatives. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was um, even more interesting for you. I, I didn't realize, to be honest, I, I didn't realize that when I uh, matched you with the Sipis uh, uh, publishers um, and these um, mm-hmm local authors uh, and reader uh, writers from Zipse, um that it uh, it matches so perfectly I, I I didn't realize that before um, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> even more uh, wonderful uh, combination um, yeah. so but um, what do you think if you compare your region and our region are there similarities or are um, there more aspects that divide the both uh, of it what do you think well K- Konas and Hildesheim both are uh, marked with this uh, mentality of not being the center not being the center mm-hmm. of attention being uh, Uh, not just regional, but kind of on the outside of all the things. Uh, so Konos is always in the shadow of Vilnius in Lithuania, mm-hmm. and Hildesheim obviously is in the shadow of, uh, of Hanover and uh, and Berlin mm-hmm. probably. And so uh, this is an obvious similarity, mm-hmm. uh, which I think uh, at least my lessons in Konos tell me that. Uh, 
it for the most part it can be an obstacle mm-hmm. but so the attempt should be made to to free yourself from this shadow and to free yourself from the shadow is basically to forget about that center not to think about it at all to realize that what you're doing is not to impress someone who is bigger and uh, better resourced but to understand that culture things that you do is is for yourself yeah. not for someone else not to show off that you're doing these things but uh, it, it's got value in itself so when you will when you when this happens when this mentality changes uh, you stop uh, being on the outskirts you become the center mm-hmm. because uh, there's passion and that passion attracts attention and then suddenly you become the center of attention so i think uh, uh, that the lessons which i learned in Kona trying to do the initiatives which I do and that's what I try to transmit to the people I met in Sibese that first and foremost you have to do what is interesting for you not anyone else and Mm -hmm. then uh, the rest will follow I totally agree with you that uh, we are not aware of our treasures we have And uh, we are not that co- self-confident uh, to to um, well to to stand for ourselves. Um, but um, let's come back to Zibise once more. Um, yeah. When when you think of Zibise and the the area of Zibise with all its small villages around, um, what do you think? What is the most treasure? Uh, of this uh, of this area area of this region or what what would you suggest people to discover in Zibisa for instance I I think maybe it will sound quite trivial and naive but uh, I think the treasure is always uh, the people mm-hmm. the biggest treasure is the people and so when we spoke in Zibisa with the uh, with the cultural activists with the group I tried always to divert attention to how we get the people together, how we get them out of their houses, how we get them onto the streets, how we get them to meet each other, how we uh, build the community. And the community, which is uh, which means that individuals have ties to each other. And that that's the biggest capital, uh, which is anywhere, in any country, any region of the world. The rest is... Uh, is just an addition so to speak mm-hmm. yeah. the, so that, that that's the same i think in Kona's, in berlin and in, and in, in hildesheim and in Sibise, the mm-hmm. people yeah so we need to stay in touch and need to stay uh, in conversation with each other Do, would you agree absolutely i think uh, Creating a community uh, is has to be the first and foremost goal of any cultural activity. After that, uh, you can start talking about maybe values that will be of bigger importance, that will be valuable to someone outside, than what we spoke about becoming a center mm-hmm. of attention. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But this can't be the goal, the first goal. The first goal is about getting people together who live there already. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So we need places to meet and places to act with each other. And hmm. Absolutely. Uh, it could be a chair uh, in front of the house, for instance. Or Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, um, yes, yes. Um, I, I, I know exactly what you mean. Uh, well, uh, thank you very much, Victoras. Um, it was a pleasure to talk to you. And actually, I, I, I would have been uh, in Kaunas next week if we didn't have this virus. Uh, ah. um, yes, 
Um, but uh, so you yeah. w- w- you would have come for the for the forum. Yes, yes, indeed. And uh, yeah. now it's yeah. a, in a, it happens in a digital way. So yes. I will be yes. there uh, in in digital to, uh, digital uh, format, but um, unfortunately not uh, in uh, reality. So uh, yes. I think we will meet uh, someday in Kaunas, but it won't be next I'm sh- week. I'm sure we will. <laughs> and, I'm sure um, we will. <laughs> Yeah, and I hope we will meet in Hildesheim again. And I would love to see you here again and to welcome you again in Hildesheim. And f- first, let me thank you again for this interview and have a good time and see you. Okay? You, you too. Thanks yeah. a lot. And uh, yeah, stay, stay safe and stay healthy. Yeah. And uh, thanks for, for calling me. Yeah. It was a pleasure to, uh, to, to visit Hildesheim and hopefully that will happen again. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao.